My name is Tomasz Pras and I'm a principal software engineer uh, uh, and I work in Red Hat in the crypto team, which is basically working on uh, crypto uh, for Red Hat and Pras Linux. And, uh, um, so the topic is custom crypto policies by examples. Um, I will first start with uh, some motivation for um, crypto policies. Uh, I'll shortly uh, talk, talk about the crypto policies in general. Uh, then I will talk about the custom, uh, custom crypto policies, uh, especially I will show some examples uh, almost in a kind of living demo. And uh, I will also talk about future crypto policies. Also right. So the motivation, uh, cryptography and crypto analysis go hand in hand and the evolution of the algorithms and crypto protocols is faster and faster. You can never think that the crypto system deployed in one year will be still good enough in, in the next year. Uh, we need to get used to the changes. That's, I, I'm not going to go into details why is, is it like so, because this time it's kind of obvious. Um, what if you need to apply it to the crypto-related configuration changes regularly to hundreds of machines, physical or virtual, in heterogeneous environment? And you can complicate things even more because various machines uh, might have various needs um, uh, to communicate with legacy systems uh, and devices, and uh, basically every, every machine cannot accommodate every change the requirements. Uh, crypto policy. <coughs> I had some slide. Yeah. Uh, system crypto policies uh, come to the rescue for this task. Uh, because they are centrally managed on the system. There is a single command that, that controls all the core crypto libraries and applications using crypto. Uh, there are multiple pre-designed policy levels. Uh, which allow you some flexibility. Uh, there is a level, uh, all the levels give you up-to-date security, but some of the levels give you communication with legacy systems and some preparation for future. Uh, the system-wide crypto policies also <laughs> simplify FIPS enablement and uh, give you a special policy for that. And where you, where you can get them, you can get them in current Fedoras uh, and uh, Red Hat and Price Level State. Um, so, centrally managed means that there is a single command that controls all the libraries. There is this command, update crypto policy set, and it controls all the, uh, these libraries and uh, all the applications. Uh, and uh, the pre-design policy levels uh, are described here. Uh, we have legacy for the uh, legacy devices interoperability, default policy, which is the default one. Uh, this list is um, actually for Fedora, uh, because on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, uh, the next uh, policy um, Fedora is the default one on RHEL 8, and we will probably uh, do it for Fedora for the next Fedora release as well, uh, on Fedora. Uh, the future policy is a kind of conservative uh, policy which uh, disables uh, many things and uh, you won't be probably using this uh, level on, on normal system usage, but uh, you can use it for testing whether your application is prepared for, for future changes. And there is a special policy FIPS, which uh, enables only FIPS approved and allowed algorithms. But what to do if the predefined policy levels don't match your requirements? <coughs> they enable something that you don't want to enable, or they don't enable something that you need. That you need. Custom crypto policies can help you with that. Um, you can define your own crypto policies from scratch uh, with a simple policy definition file format or you can modify uh, even the existing predefined policy levels so you don't have to write all the policies from scratch 
but you can modify existing uh, policies by adding or removing these enabled algorithms or protocols. And uh, when are the configurations done? When actually the uh, update crypto policies uh, script is run? So the, the policy can be fully defi defined from scratch. In this case, it needs to be placed into ETC crypto policies policies, or if it's in installed package, it should be in uh, placed into user share crypto uh, crypto policies policies. And the file needs to be named uh, with name of the policy uh, in upper, uppercase. Um, this is an important thing. Uh, the suffix needs to be. A Actually, lower case. Um, so, here is a short uh, excerpt from um, User Share Crypto Policies Policies Future uh, poll, which is um, uh, the future policy. Uh, this is, of course, not the whole uh, file. Um, I can start with, with the demo. <laughs> So here is just uh, the the, uh, the uh, future policy as a whole file. You can see it's like there are many different parameters and uh, <coughs> uh, values that you can set. Um, most important thing is, is that there are kind of like three uh, types. Uh, it's a uh, list. Uh, it's an, it, uh, or two types. Uh, there is a list uh, value and uh, sing, simple, uh, simple, uh, single value, um, numeric one actually. Um, okay. Uh, and the, the update crypto policies will generate the file, uh, the the configuration <laughs> file snippet that is loaded by the uh, various uh, libraries. And for each of the libraries, it's of course different. And this is how, how the OpenSSL configuration file format looks like. And for NSS, it looks like uh, this one. Okay, presentation. Um, so this would be, it would be a kind of um, uh, hard to create the policy from scratch if you didn't know anything about uh, what are the allowed uh, values and so on. Of course you can study existing policies and up update them, but uh, there is also another poss possibility and uh, that is to create the policy modifier module. Uh, these modules need to be placed into ETC crypto policies, policies modules and they have a PMOD uh, suffix in the name of course, again, the uppercase name for the uh, base part of the file name. Um, and um, uh, these modules uh, allow you basically to depend on some uh, base policy from the system uh, and just, just uh, modify it. Um, so I'm going to show you some examples of these, uh, of these modules. <coughs> Modifiers. Um, this is this example is actually part of the uh, crypto policies uh, package, uh, and it disables SHA-1 hash uh, and use of the hash in signatures. As you can see um, in the format, uh, there is there is this minus which removes uh, item from a list, and um, uh, it. Um, you, you can see that you have, uh, you can uh, disable uh, the SHA-1 hash not only in, uh, uh, in general usage, but you can disable it in uh, signatures and it's separate setting. Um, okay, so here is the here is the file, and now I'm setting it. Uh, you can see here. I will talk about it later. But this is this is the syntax how you how you uh, set the 
the policy to be to default <coughs> policy with uh, the no shower and the module uh, edit deployed. And um, so here is the, uh, the uh, how it actually. Sorry, because this. Yeah. Um, <coughs> yeah. There is here is uh, diff, um, for OpenSSL conf, uh, and you can see that there is actually no difference. Uh, that's a limitation of the current uh, backend for OpenSSL that it, uh, the configuration does not really have a way to disable just SHA uh, You you can disable. <coughs> Uh, by going uh, into sec uh, higher sec level, but uh, not not uh, just by, by uh, removing just this algorithm. Uh, this is something that will be uh, we are working on and will be fixed in future. And, uh, but for NSS, you can see that there is difference because SHA one is here. There is SHA one on the, on the second line. And this is for buy, where um, there is Shaban edit to <coughs> disable lists. So it will be disabled. Um, another example uh, adds support for uh, Camellia uh, cipher, which is uh, off by default in, in all, the, all the policies that we ship um, for TLS at least. And show uh, yeah the, um, this way by adding plus uh, uh, before the uh, name of the algorithm uh, I will uh, it will put the uh, algorithm to the start of the list um, and um, again. You can see no difference, no difference for OpenSSL because uh, it does not uh, the the, uh, the configuration doesn't allow us enabling Camellia, uh, the backend, and um, NSS uh, allows it. You can see that Camellia here, here. but it uh, just. It, the NSS does not have a Camellia GCM support. So. Um, here, uh, this example differs only in that uh, uh, the Camellia is put as the last uh, on the on the lists uh, by uh, by adding the plus behind the name of the algorithm. You can see here, this is the, the previous example, that the Camellia is the first, uh, is even before AES256 AES, uh, here, and I am uh, then here, here uh, it will be behind AES as the last ciphers. Um, another example is to disable all TLS protocol versions. Uh, of course, in the default policy uh, in RHEL 8 or in the next policy on um, Fedora, um, this is already done. But um, um, we can do it, for example, for uh, the default policy on Fedora, or we can do it for legacy policy. So you can see that uh, this is uh, legacy policy uh, with no old TLS, and um, uh, here you can see it. Uh, minimum protocol version is set to TLS 1.2 for OpenSSL, <coughs> and for NSS, similarly, here is TLS 1.2, TLS 1.2. Was the original, like I say, policy configuration. 
uh, another example. Uh, we can uh, make the future policies somewhat more usable on general internet because uh, uh, most of the, like 80% maybe, uh, of the, or even more, uh, of uh, the certificates of the servers on, on general internet has uh, 2K uh, RSA keys only. So, and the uh, default uh, or the feature policy as is has uh, 3K minimum. Uh, so, this is, this is kind of useful if you need, if you want to try using <coughs> Uh, future policy, uh, like more. Um, this is interesting change for uh, OpenSSL backend because it uh, actually drops uh, sec level, uh, which is free on on um, uh, normal future policy, but with this it, it has only sec level too, and. This will not uh, just just uh, allow shorter keys, but it will allow uh, probably something else <laughs> also. But for NSS, which has more finer grain, okay, it will just change these uh, minimum DH uh, length and minimum RSA length. <coughs> yeah. Also separate DSA minimum, but actually uh, in future policy DSA is completely disabled. So. Uh, another example uh, is to allow only ECDH uh, or ECDH with uh, pressure pressured keys um, uh, for uh, key exchange. Uh, there is uh, important uh, to see there there is a kind of missing feature uh, that the current version doesn't allow completely override overriding particular list value and policy modified model. So you have to actually remove all the possible uh, remaining values for the exchange, which are these. I'm again applying it to, to the default policy uh, and it's finally useful change in the <laughs> OpenSSR config because yeah, this will definitely work. Like it will only enable ECDH and uh, the other key exchanges are <coughs> disabled here. So this is an assess different. Uh, so this um, would not work for for policy modifier. This this would basically just keep the existing uh, list um, as is uh, from the base policy and uh, add these, uh, these two uh, uh, key exchanges. Um, so this, would not, this would not do what you expect. Um, this is uh, something that could work in future. Basically, first I set it to empty and then add it back, add, add back the ECDH and ECDHPS. I actually already committed this change uh, into the master branch, but it's not anywhere at uh, ship yet. Um, so yeah, this is uh, already a summary of how I can uh, set the uh, set the policy with the modifier. Um, uh, I can apply the modifier to any policy. Uh, there is no kind of like uh, saying that. Um, no SHA-1 can be applied only to this on this level. No, you can apply it to any policy, even to your own policy if you want. Uh, if, you, if you have some policy written from scratch. Um, so this can be used. There will be no change because in future policy there is already no SHA-1, so there is no... Uh, it would not be that useful. You can do it. Uh, and you can uh, apply mul multiple modifiers uh, such as uh, with with, uh, with, uh, with uh, adding it uh, and another column and so on. And okay. I have the one for the yeah. Yeah, so here you have uh, Camellia is a 
here and shawal uh, is removed. So shawal is here and shawal uh, there is nothing. It's still here. Yeah, bind, bind the other <coughs> camera and so forth. So just this it is shawal. Um, so the the backend configurations, as you can see, are generated uh, during when the when the update crypto policy script is being run, and this allows uh, good things because it allows modifying the crypto libraries uh, and or the configuration generators in regards to the supported algorithms, and it will basically improve your uh, configurations if you install an improved uh, crypto policies package. Uh, even uh, completely new backends can be added uh, in future and the policy will be applied to them without the need to modify your policy or, or do some rebuilding or whatever. Um, so example is that OpenSSL uh, backend could allow uh, more fine-grained um, uh, configuration of TLS, TLS signature algorithms. Uh, it could allow different behavior in regards to SHA-1 signatures in TLS protocol versus certificate signatures. F uh, future plans. Uh, yeah, the big, big, is, big item is SHA-1. Um, uh, we should, uh, we, or we need to um, work uh, uh, on how to deprecate SHA-1 and crypto policies is the way how to do it. And uh, we will need more fine-grained backend configurations for that, even uh, for OpenSSL. NutLS is already improved uh, compared to state, but was in RHEL 8 or old Fedora, and uh, OpenSSL, sh OpenSSL should fall. Uh, and uh, there is a big item, crypto policies and data at rest, because currently it applies only data uh, in transit. I will be need to think about this. So, summary, single command to rule them all, simple policy definition format, policies are great, you can create policies from scratch or existing, uh, modify existing policy, uh, and you can, uh, the, the backend configurations are generated on the so, Thank you. Any questions? <coughs> Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, a couple of uh, quick ones. So, um, do you, are you utilizing some of the work for the FIPS kernel, or you know, there's the FIPS compliant kernel. You can you can pass the the grub option FIPS equals one. Well, FIPS equals one is is uh, sets uh, your system to FIPS mode, and uh, that that's. Uh, <coughs> Only uh, slightly related to crypto policies because crypto policies allow you to set, uh, actually set up the system so it uh, changes the boot, par, uh, boot option and and it will change your policy. But the policy applies to uh, like uh, the, the the libraries that are FIPS, uh, FIPS validated uh, don't necessarily have to disable the the non FIPS algorithms. For example, NSS is the example and. Uh, you basically have to uh, disable them in some <coughs> configuration. And, uh, yeah. But OpenSSL, on the other hand, for example, automatically disables non-FIPS algorithms in TLS if you are in the FIPS mode. Makes sense. So just the other one I was going to ask as well is, say I'm um, an application developer and I want to step up to the next level. Okay. So, so increase my crypto strength. Uh, is there, do you have like a, is there like a permissive or, a, or an audited mode where I can no. capture what's... Uh, what's yeah, the, the question is whether there is kind of like permissive mode, mode for for the uh, crypto policies that where you could like get some output if some policy is kind of, or if some algorithm is validate, uh, violating the requirements for the set in the policy but allows it. No, there is no. It would require very, very big changes in the libraries. Uh, or last question. Okay. okay. 
So assuming that everything is done properly through the tool, is there any way to interrogate the system to get that? This was the default policy with Camellia and Shell One, first shot, no Shell One applied. Uh, the question is whether, whether there is a way how to interrogate the system to, to find out whether, whether the policy was like uh, used or, or what, what was the, the policy <coughs> used when, when, when something uh, is using crypto. No, there is no way. Okay. Yeah, one more. One more. <laughs> so, is there any plan of like the, the policies you presented are really nice, but when your system may usually you want like A plus on SSL upgrade for your tiled TLS setup? So, does it support? So, do you have any plans to like update the? So, you said like we have this compatibility default old mode and all of these policies. So, are you planning to also include the policies that would automatically set up the system in such a way that it behaves like very good or it supports, let's say, Windows? Eight and newer or stuff like that. Um, I can summarize the question that is there any plan for like having like more fine grained policies or whatever or, or like predefined fine more more predefined policies? I think. No, there is no plans for that because uh, uh, it would all be like very nightmarish to support in the long term. Like, uh, okay. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.